Caitlin Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm going to take my art journaling skills to create something for on the wall, and I'm going to have a little bit of a reality check. So it's the start of a new year, and that means a lot of us are picking our word for the year. You know, that one word that's going to guide us like a beacon through the year. And as I was thinking about my word, I began to feel a lot of pressure about choosing the right word and it's going to be for a year and all that kind of stuff. And I had a little bit of a reality check with myself when I was thinking to myself about the pressure of that year long commitment that, yeah, my commitment usually is three to four weeks, not 52 of them. So I didn't need to worry so much about it. Um, and so I decided I'm going to do this a little differently this year. So instead of putting that pressure on myself, and I didn't even realize how much pressure it was until I was picking the word, I'm going to make a piece of art using the word. I'm going to put it up on the wall so that I'll see it all the time. And then I'm just going to let my subconscious do the rest of it. I'm going to take that pressure off. And I'm kind of wondering if by doing that, I'm actually going to use that word a whole lot more this year than I have any other year. Because truth be told, there were some years by the middle of the year, I didn't even remember what word I picked for that year. I'm starting out here with a wood panel that I had already gessoed. I'm adding some white paint to it, some fluid deco media paint here, and I'm just brushing it on. I wanted a nice shiny white on this. But I put a little too much paint on this, way more than actually what I needed. So what I'm going to do is brush over it a couple of times to spread that paint around. So I'll end up with a nice, even, kind of thick coat here of white paint on this. Once I've got the white paint smoothed out on here and nice and even, then what I'm going to do is let this thing completely dry. But I've got a lot of paint on that brush, and I hate to do something like waste paint, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a nearby gel print and I'm just going to spread that paint onto the print. I mean, why waste anything, right? As I'm doing this, I noticed that the white paint was changing just a little bit. It's turning blue. I don't know exactly what I had on that paper, but clearly it reacted when it got paint on it. So now I have a light blue paint on my brush that was actually kind of pretty. So I just grabbed another gel print from my stash and I'm just getting all that paint on there so that none of the paint has to be wasted and it'll make it a lot easier to clean out the brush too. Once it's completely dry, now I'm ready to add my one word that's going to guide me through the year. How did I create these letters? Well, the gist of it is, is they are gel prints that I then stenciled on top of and I stenciled them in different ways, added some embellishments to them to make each one of them unique. And if you'd like to know how I did that, let me know in the comments and I'll put that video together for you. That cue that I have there, eh, I'm not really feeling that, so I'm going to trade it out for a different cue. In each envelope, I have a different letter of the alphabet, and so it's really easy for me to find things and switch them out to get a different color or different size, that kind of thing. Basically, what I'm doing is auditioning all of these letters, their colors, their placement, that kind of thing, before I do that big commitment of using the gel medium to stick these things down. One of the perks of having a bunch of letters already pre-stenciled is that you can swap things out and see if it gives you the look that feels right to you. So I keep looking through the envelope to see another E that might call to me. And this one, interestingly enough, by the way, on that E when I made it, I thought that was just a incredibly blah, yuck kind of print. But once I cut it up and did this with it, it looked completely different. Now that E and the S that I've got there, they're both the same height and I want to have a little more variation. So to make that happen, I'm simply going to trim down some of that purple paper and that's going to make that one look smaller. For this T, I didn't want it square, I wanted it more rectangular, so I'm going to trim up the sides. It's like magic the way the paper around the letter influences how you see that letter. So if you've got a lot of paper around it, the letter might look a lot bigger than what it is. And so you can actually make two letters from the same alphabet stencil look like one is taller and one is shorter simply because of the paper that's around it. So as I'm really trimming up that S, look how much smaller it looks than the E now. But before, it seemed like it was the same size. And look how much bigger that T looks compared to the S now. So by changing the paper that's around the letter, it gives you even more options for each and every one of your alphabet stencils. All of these stencils are from Stencil Girl Products, and you bet over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com I'll have a complete, complete supply list for you. That's if I can say it, that is. 
Once I've got them the way I want them, then it's time to glue them down. The glue I'm going to be using is gel medium. Now, is this the only kind of glue that you can use? Absolutely not. I say the best glue to use is whichever one you have. Do you have a glue stick? Then go ahead and use that. Whatever kind of glue you're comfortable using, it's paper after all, so just glue it on down. Now, you'll notice that I'm only putting the gel medium on the back side. Sometimes when you've seen people glue things down, and I do it too, I might put the gel medium on the top. So the question is, why am I not doing that? Hey, there, I used my word already. But the reason why I'm not putting the gel medium on top this time is because of the Q. Now there's something different about Q than the other letters that I have on here. Q was done using the open-ended stencil, and that leaves big open areas in it that can be filled in with things like pen. And that's what I did on the Q. I drew those lines on it to give it a little bit of its own personality. But the pen is not necessarily waterproof. So if I put gel medium on top of it, there's a good chance it's going to run. So that's the big reason why I'm not putting the gel medium on top. Well, now you know what word I picked for this year. Did you pick a word? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments what your word for the year is. When I auditioned these letters on here, before they were glued down, I had them placed there so that it would be nice and centered, to be perfectly centered. And yep, there's the word that's giving you a clue of what's coming. The words not being as centered as what I wanted turned out to be an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Not a mistake, not an error, but an oops. And what that's leading me to do is try and fill in that space. Well, I've grabbed one of the masks from my Dance of This Life stencil to see how it would look there. And that's one of the cool things about a mask is you can audition things pretty easily before you commit with paint. Here's what the stencil looks like, and by the way, this stencil does include the masks for all of the figures in it. So now that I know exactly where I want to stencil it, now I just need to shift a few things around here so I can keep things on camera for you. There are a couple of things I'm going to do to help myself get a really clear, crisp image with this, because that's what I want. One thing I'm going to do is hold the stencil very still and keep it in place. If you find that the stencil moves on you, go ahead and grab a piece of repositionable tape to hold it in place. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a heavy body paint. That means the paint is less likely to run under the stencil. And I'm also going in an up and down motion with the cosmetic sponge. Normally when I create something, if there's a bunch of white space, I have this urge to cover it up. And I'm going to question that this time. And I'm actually going to leave a whole lot of white space on this thing, even when it's finished. But not all of it's going to be white. I got to add a little something more to it. So I'm putting some stars up there in that corner. And here's the thing is I want it to look like the stars are behind the words, but mm, I've already put the words on. So that master tool, the post-it note, is going to protect that. And then I'm going to be able to stencil over it. And when I lift it all up, it's going to look like that star was behind it. Of course, I'm going to have to flip the stencil around and try it here, try it there to find just the perfect star placement. When truth be told, I should have just gone with what I had first because that's what I'm going to end up doing. So what happens if you're stenciling on a small stencil like this, one of the ATC mix-up stencils from Stencil Girl, and you don't mask anything off, but you just want to do one star? Well, there's a chance you're going to get some paint where you don't want it. Yep, that's about to happen. But because it's a painted surface, it is going to be so easy to correct that. Because what I'm going to do is grab a very fancy tool, a Q-tip, dip it in some water, and then just wipe up that paint. If you get to it promptly, it comes up really easily on a painted surface. I could have masked things off a little bit better, but pretty much slapping a post-it note down there is as much masking as I like to do. I could have stopped here, but man, all that white space, boy, it is calling to me to cover it up. And I'm only gonna put a little bit more on here, just a couple more stars, and then the white space, I'm gonna leave that where it is and just put a few finishing touches on this. To put the buttons on the little guy, I'm going to put the mask right back on top of him, and then I'm going to take the cosmetic stunt, the sponge? Man, my tongue is tied. I'm going to take the cosmetic sponge, and then I'm simply going to stencil in those buttons. Everything that I've been doing here, these are all the same kinds of things that I do in an art journal page. I definitely could have done all of this in a journal instead of on a piece of wood to go up on the wall. So why am I using a fountain pen to go around the stars that are here? Well, with paint, even when it's completely dry, it can be rough on pens or pens have a hard time writing on it, but I've found that fountain pens can hold up to the task very, very well. 
Since this is my word for the year, I'm going to do a little bit of journaling on the front, but the bulk of it I'm actually going to do along the sides. And as I'm scribble journaling, I'm thinking about why I chose this word, what it means for me, and how I'd like it to guide me throughout this year. Now I'm writing in a way that I can't read it, because that's what scribble journaling is, but the cool thing about the subconscious is right now I'm planting it in there so the subconscious will let this word carry me through the year. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. I hope you've enjoyed this little reality check I had with myself about my one word for the year. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button so that you'll know as soon as there's a new one out. And of course, the full supply list is over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.